Hi guys, Jurassic Junkie here, and I'm wearing a onesie, and I'm not ashamed. Welcome to the Friday Night Ram. So the first thing I want to talk about is Cyberpunk's been delayed, and the internet has gone wild by patting themselves on the back going... I'm not bothered it's delayed. I think it's good when games get delayed. Yes, we know. We're all aware. It's 2020. We're now at that point where we don't get angry at developers for giving us shit. So it's gone from April to September. Personally, I'm very happy with that. Not just because obviously we're going to get a better polished game, but mainly because I wasn't feeling April. It's too close. And it's one of them ones that at the start of the year, I kind of want to get into the flow of actually working better i've run my own business so i want to get my business going i want to make some content i want to do all this i don't want a game early in the year that's going to suck the life out of me i want it at the back end of the year if anything i would actually like them to miss september and drop it around about november because that's the time when i start winding down my work and i can just veg and just sit and play computer games but if it did land in november you're kind of straggling that new generation of games and it kind of got me thinking like it is going to be on next gen anyway because obviously backwards compatibility but are we going to potentially see a delay in September pushing it into next gen? And if so, that's fine. That's good. But I kind of wish you would be upfront about it and say, look, next gen's around the corner. Let's just utilize this new hardware. We're going to put a delay on it. It's going to be November, December-ish. And um, then you're going to actually get a proper port for that generation that's going to utilize its hardware. But at the same time, I'm not bothered that if they didn't do that because... This is a developer I have trust in. I think the world is going to be rich and I think it's going to be a fantastic game. So I'm not bothered. But with it being so close, there's something about me just going, make it next gen. But at least we're going to be able to utilize the speeds of the new consoles anyway. So the first thing I really want to talk about this week is um, PlayStation. Big announcement. Did we all watch CES 2020? I bet we did. Did we all sit there as they went, here is our new logo yes so they dropped the ps5 logo and um it, that's fine you've got nothing to show here's the logo we'll show you the stuff later but the, what annoyed me is if it would have been xbox that would have done that they would have been absolutely hung quartered they would have had the skin flailed like anybody would have jumped on and gone oh my god you just released the logo yet playstation do it and it's absolutely fine but saying that Let's compliment PlayStation for having the name of PS5. Fucking thank you. Nice and easy. Oh, this new game's coming out in 2020. What does it work on? PS5 only. Don't work on PS4. That's easy enough for my little brain to understand. But yet, then when Xbox is going to start doing it and they drop support for the Xbox One series, then it will be like, this works on Xbox Series X, but not the Xbox One x series what the what the fuck please tell me microsoft this is a holding name and you're going to do something better because i do not like i do i like the look of it i like the hardware specs but we're going to get supposedly i just really don't like the name and it's fine because i'll end up calling it the xbox so is it on playstation or xbox that's fine i'm just thinking about the old deer that's going to buy the nephew um a game they're going to go into a game shop and they'll be like i want this and they'll be like well this one works with well, there's going to be a little sticker saying works on xbox one x xbox one x enhanced with xbox one series x game which one does it fucking work on but the main thing i actually want to talk about regarding this is it sounds like sony is pulling out of the e3 race and i kind of predicted this on a previous video saying e3 is dead and i'm i'm happy and sad with this so let's just talk about why i'm happy i kind of think that e3 paints a dot on people's backs to say you must produce by this date which is wrong it they should produce when they're ready like cyberpunk being delayed it's ready when it's ready so for forcing the hardware manufacturers to have to scramble all this stuff together to go here you go on a particular date isn't right in my opinion it should be dropped when they're ready we've had plenty of e3s in the past where they're just like is some cgi cut scenes and you're like fucking bitch give me some gameplay and they'll probably respond well we would if you would have given us time to bake this pie a couple more months we could have potentially shown you something 
So I'm down for it. I think each individual manufacturer should just go, we're going to make our own videos when we're ready. And if anything, I want to see more of that as well. I want to see them doing, I know they do the state of play and Xbox is doing their own little things and Nintendo do theirs, but I want them to drill in a little bit more. It hasn't always got to be, here's some new games. It can be like, oh, you know, this game's coming. We're just going to show you a bit of it. And by a bit of it, we mean nothing. We're just going to go and talk to the developers. We're going to see inside the developers' uh, headquarters, which I love seeing inside of. We're going to talk to this dude right here, Kevin. Kevin is working on the textures. Hi, Kevin. Tell me about the textures. And they'll be like, well, this is what we're doing. Here's a quick shot of a cave. And um, here's our vision board. And we wanted to go with some dust from Mars to kind of give that futuristic feel. I want to hear people talk about it with passion. And... These games come out and they're living and breathing. They're fantastic and we love them. But the only trouble is I want to see this small guy that's crafted it. Because each individual person is bringing it in. Someone's doing the assets. Someone's doing the voice acting. Someone's doing this, that, that. I want to see them. So I would like developers and publishers and hardware manufacturers to produce more intimate videos of actually talking to the people that craft it. So then E3 is five months away. And the rumors are saying that PlayStation are going to be dropping their information in five weeks. Now, that annoys me, but at the same time, I understand it. It annoys me because at first I'm like, yeah, don't force them to have to give you the information until the redder. Well, it sounds like the redder. So I would like them to hold it back and at E3 go, bam, this is the unit that we're actually been working on. But at the same time, I completely get why. Xbox has done a little bit of a dribble. They've gone, there is what a console looks like. Here's a couple of rumors and whatnot about the hardware. People are talking about the Xbox not many people talking about PlayStation movement because we ain't got much information. So they've kind of got to get in front of that, release some information earlier so we can start talking about both and people can get excited for both. So I completely get the mindset of it. But it's just, it does make me sad that now obviously people are going to be on their own paths now and producing content when they want to. That's, I'm fine with. But I miss the old days of E3 being the place where you actually got the content. I like it when we didn't know a particular game is coming, the curtains draw back, a trailer is played, a bit of music's played, and you go, oh, is that? And then it is that, whatever that be. And it was a magical and exciting time. But now we've got all these news outlets constantly second guessing everything. We have inside information from people that are trusted sources. And time we get to E3, we pretty much know what the fuck is going to happen anyway. We just actually get to see it. So I do think E3 is dead. Um, I do think they're probably all going to just do their own stuff now, which is good. But part of me dies a little bit. I would have loved to see PlayStation, especially with it being the next gen. Like I would have preferred PlayStation to just go, we're going to be at E3. Xbox is going to be at E3. Let's both just throw our cards down at the same time. Welcome to next generation. F moving forwards, we're going to fizzle back and release on our own timelines. But obviously that is not going to be the case. So then, the big thing I want to talk about is something that's been and gone, and I don't think we've had time to point our fingers at it and go, what a fucking mess. And that is Shemu 3. Now, before I jump in, I've not played Shemu, So I can't sit there and say if it's good or bad. It sounds like it's bad. I've seen some footage of it. It looks a little bit roper. It kind of looks like it belongs on the Dreamcast still, which is cool. But at the same time, it behaves like it's on the Dreamcast, which ain't so cool. But I do have friends that are Big Shemu fans, they backed it, and I've gone, how was it? And they went, I, I, I didn't get to finish it, and I, I never completed it. So that tells me if a Shemu fan cannot complete the game, it's not too great. But I'm not here to talk about this game's broken because of XYZ. I just want to talk about the manufacturing process and the entire mess that is Shemu 3. So to do so, we need to just jump in a little bit and go down the rabbit hole of the previous history, why I think it makes it even worse. So in 1999, it dropped on the Dreamcast. And at the time, everyone was saying it was the most expensive game ever made. There is a slight little point to that. That budget sounds like it may have been for Shemu 1 and 2. So it would have been across two games. But still, a lot of money was injected into that game. And not much money came back. Did people enjoy it? Fuck yes. It was groundbreaking at the time. Did it sell ridiculous amounts of units? No. So it was a commercial flop as such. But the weird thing is, obviously, they release it on Dreamcast. There it is. It's on the console Dreamcast. And two years later, they go like, here is Shemu 2. And we're going to drop this to the Dreamcast again, because that's where our audience is. 
and a year later we'll give it xbox here's a new audience so they're just strangling across two of the platforms at the moment then in 2004, they was doing Shemu Online, which was an app for PC. Then in 2007, cancelled so PC didn't get it. Then 2010, Shemu City was announced for mobile and PC, and then PC didn't get it again. And also, I'm aware that obviously PC have eventually got like Shemu One, Two ports. But the point is, the majority of the times this has been launched, it's been Dreamcast and Xbox. And I feel like a lot of Dreamcast users went on to Xbox because at the same time you had the Dreamcast, you had the PlayStation, the two different camps and PlayStation people continued consuming PlayStation. So and I feel like a lot of Dreamcast people went from Dreamcast to Xbox like I did and many others did. So the point is you've got this audience of people on this particular consoles that live on this side and you've got PlayStation on this side. And then when it comes to actual Shenmue 3, it gets announced, it's going to be on Kickstarter, it's going to come across to all platforms, yay. And obviously then Sony got in there and it was like, Psst, here's some money, make it exclusive. So now it's only coming to PC and PlayStation, which is weird because the fans live over here and now it's coming over here. And I'm not saying you're not a fan if you're a PlayStation and you've played it through a port version or whatever. I'm just saying the majority of them live there and now you're supplying there. That's the first weird thing. Then the second thing is the money. So first of all, they got £7 million off Kickstarter because no one would back it. People saw it as a commercial flop. People want this game. They're demanding this game, but it doesn't mean that's a lot of them. They're just vocal. It's the same when somebody does something bad and is this outroar on Twitter. It doesn't mean there's millions of people outroared. It just means the few that are are fucking loud. And don't get me wrong, I think there's probably going to be quite a lot of Shenmue fans out there, more than a bunch of angry Twitter people. But the point is, just a very loud pocket of people, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a big, large pocket of people. But the point is, the people that really want this would then go and back it. They would give them money because they'd be like, this is our last attempt to Shenmue. It's been around the houses, no one wants to touch it. We're going to fuck this fucking bill. Here's our money which means the money's been paid in return for the game. So when the game comes and launches, who are they selling it to? Because anyone that wants this potentially has backed it. Don't go wrong, there's a few people that's probably been burnt by Kickstarter and they're going, I ain't dealing with that. I'll just buy it when it comes out. But I feel like this market that's not quite big, most of it already did the Kickstarter, which leaves a very small slither of people. So they've got this £7 million, which is bloody good budget for a small team. And then they do a slacker backer, which is a way for them to get more money out of people because the Kickstarter only has a certain length, a month or whatever it is, it ends. And then they say, just for the people that missed out on that. And I don't understand who missed out on it. Anyone that's a Shem Yu fan would have woke up on the morning of the Kickstarter and it would have been across Twitter, social media. Even when you watched E3, it was announced. First time we've ever really seen a Kickstarter at E3. It was fucking everywhere. So who missed it? I don't know. Maybe somebody's like, oh shit, actually, I wish I backed it to potentially get some of the uh, cool reward items. So there might have been a small market. So people then start paying through the slacker backer. And then the question is, what rewards do you get? On Kickstarter, more you pay, higher the tier. On PayPal, it's kind of this open, you're giving us money, what are you going to get back? And this is where I think it's a bit shady. They could honour these people. They've double dipped, they've got the 7 million and they're getting some PayPal money at the same time. So should you reward these people? I personally think yes. But if you want to be tight and keep that money in your pocket, you'd say no. But if you said no, there might be uproar. People might be angry. People might request the money back. So what do you do? You blame it on someone else. You do a poll. You ask your Kickstarter fans, should we give these PayPal peasants some rewards? And when they say no... You can say, well, sorry, they, they, they kind of footed the big bill. They, they, they're the businessmen of this, aren't they? We're going to listen to them. And I would have guessed Kickstarter would have said no. But apparently not. 6,432 people went, I don't care. 4,670 said, yes, give them rewards. They're paying just like us. Pay them. And by pay them, I mean reward them. And then the smallest number of all, only 4,000 people went, no, only give it us. We're the only ones that can get it. So the poll says pretty much they're not bothered or definitely do it. And then developers turn around and go, oh, shit. Right. We're not going to give them you. 
we've done a poll and you've paid us, but we're just going to ignore everything. You don't get shit. So now then, they've got the PayPal money, they've got the Kickstarter money, Sony comes in, like a bit of exclusivity, here's some money, drops that in their palms. Then we get Shibuya Productions, butchered the name probably, they give him an injection of money. Sega sat there going, yo, don't forget about us. Bang, it's some more money. Deep Silver saying, we got deep pockets. Here's some silver from my deep. Oh, I'm too funny sometimes. Nonetheless, Deep Silver chucks some money in. And then Epic Games with the ridiculously deep pockets go, here's some more money. Now, all these people are investing into this game now because obviously the fanfare is going. People are talking about it. It's all around Twitter and whatnot. But the point is, like I said earlier, who are they now selling this game to? Sounds like pretty much every man and his dog's backed it. Every man and his dog's going to get his digital copper. Some are going to get physical depending on how much they paid. But the point is, who else is going to buy it? And now it's exclusive to PlayStation. They're going, right, PlayStation users, you may have potentially never played this game because it used to live over here. Well, here's the third installment. I hope you enjoy it. And don't get me wrong, there will probably get a few people that will bite at it. But we're talking small numbers now. And now is the biggest problem with me. You get these... Now here's the biggest problem with this game for me. It was first coming out in 2018, second half, delayed. Then it got pushed back to 2019, delayed. Then it got to August 27, 2019, delayed. Then it got to November 19th, produced. And I'm not here to moan about delays. Like I said with Cyberpunk, you delay as much as you want. But the point is, the delaying so much now. I even said to my mate, you ain't getting it in 2019. That's a 2020 game. And the next minute, it was here. And I was like, oh, I was wrong. I'm surprised. But what was weird, it was a case of, it's here. No fanfare, no massive advertising campaign. And I find that quite odd that anyone that knows about it is already paid. We keep saying this. So now you've got to entice these extra people, especially you've had an injection from 50,000 other developers and publishers and all that lot. You've kind of got to get some good sales going to repay a couple of these people back. You get games like Call of Duty that come out and they spend so many millions on producing the game and as many millions on advertising the game. And I always find it quite weird because for anyone that wants a COD knows it's coming. You could produce that game with little advertising, and I think it would still do exactly as they would without the advertising. But the point is, Red Dead and all these people do these big promotions, billboards, the paint buildings, everything. But yet, Shemu, and I'm not saying they've obviously got that budget, but Shemu did fuck all, and that was the game that needed it, because one, they're entering a market that which they've not really been PlayStation, and second of all, they've delayed it so many times. People like me was like, it ain't coming yet. So when you are legitly coming, you've got to start shouting about it. It's coming. We're doing it. We're doing it. And somebody might be like, well, they did tweet. Fuck a tweet. You need to use some of that ridiculous budget that you've now got to start telling people and getting some trailers and getting the fucking action going for people going, ooh, ooh, this game where everyone's been waiting for. I may not have played one or two, but everyone's excited around me. Let's go buy it. And they didn't. It kind of just came and went, and that was it. So overall, I just think that it's just been a mess from the first to the last installment of this game. They've done mobile ones that tried to comport it. It didn't. When they come out in the heyday, when it was good, that they still didn't retain much money. And now they're taking money from everybody, advertising to nobody, and getting next to no sales. And to top it all off, the game's pretty shit by the looks of it. So I just think that Shamu is just that beast that will never, ever do well. And I think it's the death of it now. It is done and dusted. And also, I think it's going to make a lot of people come away from Kickstarter. I've been burned in the past, but that's because I've gone for indie games. And I've gone, they need my money. So you give it the indie games. It's a fucking gamble. I've backed five. I saw two come to light. The other three, my money disappeared. So I don't really back the indies anymore, unless it's a potential developer that I know that I can trust. But when it comes down to a larger company, you're like, Shemu 3, I've got trust this ain't going to go under. So you back it. And I feel like people have potentially now been burned from a big games and the small games. And a lot of people are going to be like, I ain't touching it anymore.
So yes, that's my Shenmue 3 rant. I needed to get it off my chest because it just feels like a mess that not many people are talking about. They're talking about the actual game itself, but I'm just saying everything. Everything about it is a mess. So that's pretty much where I'm going to love you and leave you today. Um, I apologize if it felt like I've gone through this quite quickly. Um, I'm trying to get this microphone dialed in a little bit more. Uh, I will do better over the time. I filmed this video three times. The first one messed up too much. Second time I did it, played it back. We had some big old audio problems. So I'm hoping, well, if you're seeing it, the audio is fine. If you ain't, I deleted it and I'm just going to go and have a... Uh, I was going to say a strong whiskey, but I'm not drinking at the moment. So yeah, I, I would just probably chuck myself down the stairs if this audio is not working. So thank you very much for tuning in. It is a Friday, being a Friday night rant. I will be streaming tonight. I'm going to be playing some Dead Space. And uh, Uncle Junkie's been working on some magic. To my left right now, I have a, a um, Adreno board connected to a PC, which is connected to a servo, which is connected to a piece of rope right above my head. And I can put things above my head. And as I'm playing games, people control it. And it drops down in front of my face, making me scream a little bit and um, i've just been and purchased a doll which i'm going to now melt with the lighter and try and make it a little bit scarier and we're going to hang that above my head while i'm playing dead space so that could be quite interesting if you don't see me again i had a heart attack so that's me done take it easy folks i'm going to walk out so you can see the full beauty of my ones there i hope you have a great week take it easy folks toodles oh yes yeah you're feeling it aren't you oh Daddy's got the locks. See ya!